Yes, a blank canvas can be very scary. But let's start by finding simple reference points on which to build the painting, just like building the foundation of a building. For me, the top of the head is usually a good place to start, then the bottom of the chin. This way I know how big the face will be and where it will be located on the canvas. Here's about where the left and right sides of the face will be. This last reference line is very important. It determines the proportions of the face. Is it just like the subject? Or maybe too tall or too wide? If you don't get this right, it will be tough to get a good likeness later on. Next, a rough outline of the face will help me see if the proportions look right. And of course the hair will frame the face. A few little spatial eye measurements and then I want to get a reference for how much that shadow covers the face. It looks about a quarter of the way to the left side. That eye on the right falls right about where the shadow line crosses the eye line. Where do the eyes fall and are they level? In this case they're not, but like most people they fall about halfway between the top of the head and the chin. And the other eye lies on that line about halfway back to the cheek. The top of the ear is just a little higher than the eye and slants back almost exactly at the same angle as the jawline. Now that I'm getting more reference points, I can start thinking about small areas, like the eye sockets. I could also make the eye references a bit stronger. The base of the nose is usually about halfway between the eyes and the chin. Notice the alignment of the nose shadow, right from the inside of the eye shadow. Great reference. The width of the nostrils is very important. A plastic surgeon once showed me that on a woman, keeping this narrow can shave 10 years off her looks. A good thing to know. Now that I had more of the face roughed in, I could adjust that left edge a little. The mouth is usually about a third of the way down from the nose to the chin. But I just made a quick note here for now. I wanted to get that strong cheek line in first to help get an accurate placement for the mouth. Notice the mouth slants down a little and it's a lot longer than I sketched it in. That's because I got distracted and went to adjust the nose shadow. And then on to the right edge of the face, making a suggestion of the shadow area. Filling in the shadow areas will start to give the feeling of depth to the head. That dark nostril makes a good reference point, so I'm careful about getting it placed accurately. Then I made some suggestions for the eyebrows. And darkened in the eye socket. The shadow under the eyelid is another good mark, as well as the crease in his forehead. Then, since I was there, I strengthened up the shadow a bit. Next came the ear opening, which is also a good indicator for the width of the head, so I was pretty careful about placing it, along with checking on the jawline. To find the edge of his neck, I used the eye for a reference, and noticed it was lined up slightly to the left. What I didn't notice is that it slants to the right. I didn't get this exactly right. That's an interesting group of shadows under the mouth and that accidental blob of paint. I'll deal with that later. First, I had to get more of the shadow side of the chin filled in. The eye placements looked accurate by now, so I made them a little stronger. Unfortunately, I'm not as good as a camera, but as in the game of horseshoes, you just need to be close. Anyway, none of these reference points are cut in stone. As you get more of them on the canvas, you will be able to make better judgments for accuracy and move them around if necessary. 
Time to start filling in the shadows under the chin. Locate the right neckline. And begin filling in more of the right side of the face. I was being very careful about getting the shape of the triangle of light on his cheek accurate. It has a big effect on the likeness. By filling in more of the shadow area, the head was starting to get more of a 3D dimensional look. Did a little checking on top of the ear with reference to the side of the head and the eye. Then I checked the location of the hairline as it follows the shape of the face. This constant checking and adjusting is what will make the foundation accurate and that is the whole purpose of this exercise. Now some more checking and strengthening of the shadow side of the face. You'll notice I'm working all over the face at the same time, bringing everything along together for the final foundation. I'm not getting into any final detail anywhere. It's frustrating to get some section like an eye or a nose or an ear all nice and finished, then find out it needs to be moved. This can ruin your day. Okay, back to the neck area to see how the neck meets the shirt. If you're going to be wrong about the length, try to be too long rather than too short, especially on women. A word to the wise. Next, I located the top of the other ear. And notice how it slants back to the face just like the other one. I match the angle and located the opening. It looks like the hair is a little fuller than I first thought. Time for a correction. I took a quick break from finding references to just fill in the next shadow. And make a note for that cleft in the chin. Now the checking and strengthening for the cheek crease. And some for the jaw and necklines. The height of the shoulders also describes the neck length. So be careful about making them too high. Which makes the neck look shorter. Again, that's a no-no. A little more fill for the neck to check how the head sits on it. I check on the height of the forehead. As usual, I'm checking accuracy all over the place, making little adjustments and strengthening the ones that I feel are okay. Still not cut in stone yet but getting close to final acceptance. Now a few quick references for the shirt. For this demo, I didn't want to go any further than the face itself, but the next line is also important for your foundation, so I threw in a few quick references. I used a different color for the shirt but that's only because I wanted to separate it from the face for this demo. This little dark area in the hair gave me a good reference for the height of the forehead, so I made a quick note. You could go around rechecking the accuracy all over the face, but this is a good enough foundation to build on. And here is what the finished portrait looks like. From here on, it's where it really gets exciting. As you work toward the finish, you can make subtle adjustments or even corrections. I have over 40 other videos here on YouTube that can help you with tips on the various other stages of building your portraits. Plus, I have a few longer videos that you can order from my website, 
www.irvrudley.com. How I Did It teaches how I start a portrait from scratch to a finished portrait. The practice portrait shows a method of practicing to sharpen your painting skills. And the oil sketch for those quickie practice sessions. Check them out, plus a gallery of many of my paintings at this address. And remember to have fun painting.